Hello, this is the second video on interactive isometric drafting. Now we will take the example of frustrum of a cone, base diameter 60 mm and top face diameter 40 mm and height of 60 mm. First we need to construct the base of the cone, which is a circle. In isometric it becomes an ellipse, so we use four center method of construction of ellipse. So I am drawing a square box in isometric of dimension 60 mm by 60 mm. Draw the leading diagonal. Join this corner to the midpoint of this line. Draw a line from the same corner to the midpoint of this line. Now use arc by center point method and create four arcs to complete the ellipse. So the first arc is having this center. This is the starting point. Draw the arc like this. Second arc has this center. This is the starting point and this is the end of the arc. Third arc has this intersection point as a center here. Starting point here and draw the arc. When you draw the arc like this, you can trim a portion and extend the remaining portion and correct it. Use extend to next to extend the arc till the next point. Similarly, draw the arc on the other side. Now from the center of the ellipse, you have to draw a height of 60 mm using a line like this. We know the top face of the cone is also an ellipse. Instead of drawing the ellipse again there, we can make use of the bottom ellipse. We can copy from the bottom face to top face and scale it down to the required diameter that is 40 mm diameter. So I am copying the ellipse from the bottom center to the top center like this. Then I will use scale option. Select the top ellipse and enter a scaling factor of 4 by 6 because I am trying to reduce the diameter from 60 to 40 mm and place the reduced ellipse to the same center. Now you should draw two tangents to join these two ellipses. So I am drawing a line here at some distance and another line on this side at some distance to the ellipse. Then I will use tangent relationship you can see here this is the tangent relationship I will use that click on that click on the line and click on the ellipse it becomes tangent there similarly on the bottom side similarly on the left side two places you have to make them tangent now two lines are tangent to the ellipses you have to trim the extra portion which is unwanted if necessary you can zoom the areas and trim the unwanted portions of the line and delete the unwanted line segments like this. Hold control button and select the top ellipse and the two tangents. Make them dark as they are visible. In the bottom ellipse, not the complete ellipse is visible, so we have to split the arcs at appropriate places and make them visible. See, I am splitting this arc at this point, the end point of this tangent. If the end point is not showing, you switch on the appropriate option in the IntelliSketch. See, now the arc will be split at the end point of the tangent. See, it is split now. On the other side also you can do the same, split the arc at the end point of the tangent. Now hold control button and select the three 
arc segments in the front and make them dark as they are visible and indicate the isometric angles now go to scale option select the entire system and reduce the scale to 0.8164 that completes the solution Next we will take up a tetrahedron of side 60 mm. Initially you have to construct the base of the tetrahedron which is an equilateral triangle with one of the side perpendicular to VP like this. Then you draw medians to get the center of the triangle. Then join all the corners to the center of the triangle. These lines represent the slant edges of the tetrahedron in the top view. Split the medians at the center of the triangle so that you can show all the three slant edges as dark lines. Yeah, now it is the complete top view of the tetrahedron. Then draw the front view for this. To get the apex of the tetrahedron, you have to draw the axis first like this. Then you have to draw a line from this corner, which is of length 60 mm and it meets the axis at this point. Then complete the front view. Show the visible lines dark. Indicate the axis with axis line type. Now determine the height of this tetrahedron which is required to construct the isometric view later. Now enclose the triangle in the top view with a rectangular box like this. Determine the width of this rectangular box. This much preparation is required before starting the isometric projection of this tetrahedron. Now we can start isometric lines. First draw the isometric view of the rectangular box which enclose the top view of the equilateral triangle. Start from line 60 mm 30 degree, 51.96 mm 150 degree and 60 mm minus 150 degree and close the sketch and construct the triangle like this. Then get the center of this triangle by drawing two medians. From the center you draw the height which is 48.99 mm. Then connect this apex to all the bottom face corners. Scale down the entire figure by 0.8164 so that it becomes an isometric projection. Identify the visible lines and darken them. Indicate the isometric angles. That completes the construction. Next consider first term of hexagonal pyramid of base sides 30 mm and top face sides 20 mm and a height of 60 mm. First construct the hexagon of sides 30 mm which represents the bottom face of the first term. You can also start by constructing the top face which is of sides 
20 mm then draw a horizontal diagonal you can make a copy of this hexagon separately and scale it up and bring it and place it onto this or you can also scale the existing hexagon at the same point Now you can join the corners like this to represent the slant edges of the frustum. Split the lines if required and make the visible line star. This is how a frustum look in the top view. Now inner hexagon is of size 20 mm and outer hexagon is of size 30 mm. Now enclose outer hexagon inside a rectangular box like this. Find out the required dimensions. Now start constructing the isometric view of the bottommost face that is hexagon of size 30 mm. Then draw a diagonal line to find the center of the face. Construct the axis of the frustum which is of length 60 mm. Copy the hexagon from the bottom face center to the top face center. Scale down the top hexagon by a factor 2 by 3. Join the corners to represent the slant edges. Scale down the entire figure by 0.8164. Show the visible lines with thick lines. And finally show the isometric angles that completes the solution. Now we will construct hemisphere in two ways. First one circular face being upward. Construct the top face of the hemisphere which is a circular face which looks like an ellipse in the isometric view by four center method. This is the top face of the hemisphere. Now we have to scale it down by 0.8164. Then represent the spherical surface by using an arc like this. Then show the visible lines dark. This completes the construction. You see the circular face is upward now. If you want circular face to be downward, then construct the ellipse for the circular face and scale it down then represent the spherical surface by using an arc like this Then split the arcs wherever required and show the visible lines. That's the end of this solution. A spear which is cut at the center exactly is called hemisphere. If it is cut at any other location, it is called a cut spear. Here we are having a case of a cut spear of diameter 50 mm and cut at a height of 38 mm such that the circular face is upward. 
draw a circle of diameter 50 mm first draw a horizontal chord above the center of the circle dimension the distance between the lower quadrant point of the circle and the chord like this make it 38 mm also show the dimension between the chord and the center of the circle and notice that it is 13 mm now find the diameter of the top face see here it is showing 42.71 mm that is the diameter of the face which we need to construct now so construct the isometric view of the circle which is of diameter 42.71 mm like this using four center method Now draw a line from the center of this ellipse vertically downward which is of length 13 mm that is actually the center of the sphere. Now scale down the figure by a factor 0.8164. Now draw an arc by taking this as center. Start from somewhere here and end the arc somewhere here. Now you need to make this arc tangent to the ellipse at two points. So use tangent relationship and make the tangent like this. You can zoom and check if there is any extra portion of the arc. If it is present, you can trim it. Otherwise, that's it. You can highlight the visible lines dark. That is the final solution.